Hey guys, welcome back to Amy Reads, or welcome if you have never been here before. My name is Amy, and we're going to do bookish stuff today. Uh, today, I am going to be doing my April reading wrap-up. Yes! So, this should be a rather short wrap-up, because a lot of the books that I read this month were part of a experiment of sorts that I was doing, <clears throat> where I was rereading the lowest rated five star reads of mine. I know that's kind of a bad way to put that, but um, so books I gave five stars to that have the lowest ratings on Goodreads. I reread those five books and there's a whole reading vlog dedicated to that that I will link down below. There was also a book in here that I read this month that I did a singular review for, so I will also link that down below. So today I will, I will go over those briefly, but I'm mostly going to talk about the other books that I read this month. So last month I think I started doing this and I really like it because when I watch reading wrap-ups, I like to have statistics. Um, so I had zero one stars, um, one two star, um, six three stars, two four stars, and three five star reads this month. I read a total of 4,149 pages. A little bit of a genre breakdown. Four of those were YA contemporary, six were either adult contemporary literary fiction, um, one was nonfiction, and one was horror. I didn't DNF anything this month. I did, however, have five rereads, the five that I just discussed with you, uh, and I did not take place in any readathon, or I did not take part in any readathons this month. Um, so those are kind of my little monthly statistics, and uh, like I normally do, I'm going to go in order of my lowest rated to my highest rated, um, and then I'll go over the ones that I did for my separate video. Starting with uh, the three star reads that I had outside of my experiment. So starting with my three star reads, I read We Are Never Meeting in Real Life by Samantha Irby, which is a collection of essays. This was one of my TBR jar picks for April, and I did enjoy this. This is the first thing I've read by Samantha Irby. Um, she is very, very funny. There was a lot of laugh out loud moments in this book, but I think because I felt sort of I felt like the essays were very hit or miss, and usually when you have a collection of either essays or short stories, for me, I feel like it ends up being about half and half, and a lot of times I end up giving those a three, um, just because I don't find that many of them to be good, and I did find that a lot of her essays, like, they really lost focus and kind of meandered, um, but she is very funny. So, I mean, I still think that this is worth a read, and I think that there are definitely people out there who will enjoy it more than I did. Um, I didn't think it was a bad book by any means, and I am glad that I read it. Another three star that I read was Always Never Yours, and this is by Emily Wibberly and Austin Sigmund Bracca. Um, I had had this on my radar for quite a while and everybody talked about how much they loved this book and I thought oh this is just kind of like a flying under the radar why contemporary. Um, and like I said I did give this three stars. It was an enjoyable read. I did think that it was, it sounds awful saying it's very juvenile when it's young adult. I just tend to enjoy a young adult novel that has I don't know, not nearly as much drama, unnecessary drama, um, and I felt like this book had a lot of that. I realized that it is set in a drama club, basically, um, but I don't know. Some things worked for this uh, book, and, and I liked that it was very sex positive. That was something I really did enjoy about this, um, but it was overall just sort of an okay read for me. Um, would I recommend it to some people? Sure. Uh, but it just ended up being an all right one. However, I do love this cover. I am really sad to give this next book three stars. It was one of my most anticipated reads of the month, and I talked about it very, very little on Twitter when I was reading it. But that is Wilder Girls by Rory Power. This is, as you can see, a Yalfest exclusive arc. I waited in a very, very long line to get this arc and meet Rory Power, who was very nice. Um, this book felt, and I think part of it is that it's very hyped 
And I've talked about that a lot on this channel where for me, if a book is overhyped, I find myself being disappointed in it and it's not even the fault of the book per se. But I felt like this was overhyped and I felt like as opposed to being inspired by Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer, it felt very like a copy of that in a lot of ways. Um, this also has a queer relationship in it. Although if we're really being honest, it has no real substance and is not really developed in any way. It just feels, I mean, and it doesn't have to be a romance heavy book necessarily because it's definitely not. Um, but I just felt like I was, I was expecting more from that, more maybe literally anything. Things I did like about this book, um, I did think that it was very creepy and there were some um, parts in this dealing with like some body horror that were straight up hard to read. Um, but I felt like the characters fell very, very flat for me. I don't want to talk too much about the ending or anything, um, but I read this a few weeks ago and I've honestly forgotten most about it. So the original or the actual cover, which I will put in right here, everyone is talking about it being the most gorgeous cover. I totally agree. Um, I just wish that the book for me lived up to the hype. Um, again, a three is a is like a standard okay read for me. I didn't hate it. I just think I expected a lot more from it. Okay, moving on to the couple of four-star reads I had. Uh, the very first book I completed this month was After I Do by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I listened to this on audiobook and gave it four stars. This was the last Taylor Jenkins Reid I needed to read before I had read them all. So now I have read all of her books. Um, and I think that this one is my least favorite, which... I gave all her books either four or five stars, so I mean, I still actually love all of them, um, but if I'm ranking them, this one's probably my least favorite, and this deals with a couple who's been married for like 10 or 12 years, and they just honestly are at a point where they kind of can't stand one another, and they decide to separate in a sense that they are going to spend one year apart, kind of no questions asked, and with the intent, really, of trying to make it back to one another. Um, so, very hard to read. Um, Taylor Jenkins Reid still has just this, um, you know, any of her books that I read, they just have this way of of making you feel like this is someone you, you really know in real life. Um, the ease with which she can develop a character. I think it's just such an incredible gift. Um, and, and that is still so present in this book. I think that I just, this story was not my favorite of hers. Next up is My Favorite Half Night Stand by Christina Lauren. I got this out from the library and I had been wanting to read it for a while now. I think this came out last December. And um, this is about a woman and her three is it three or four best like guy friends they all are like professors at this university together and um they all kind of have not so great love lives i mean they've been in relationships but nothing you know really great in a while and so um because there's some big event coming up they decide to go on a dating app together um the woman in the group whose name i cannot remember uh it's been a few weeks since i read this but she decides to kind of tweak all their profiles because they weren't good at writing them. And so they think, well, you're not great at writing your own profile. So she makes another profile and ends up like catfishing one of the guys, basically. Um, where she's not lying about her actual experiences. Like everything she talks about is really her. Um, but she's not being honest about it actually being her. Does that make sense? So... That's a little weird, but I really liked this a lot. Um, I just really enjoyed the relationship between the two main characters, and I did think that it was a realistic conclusion for them. Um, and I liked their little friend group, and uh, yeah, Christina Lauren books are just, 
They're very easy to read. If you enjoy adult romances with some definite steamy time in there, uh, then I mean, I very highly recommend her. And this wasn't my favorite of hers, but it was a solid four star for me. And moving on to my five star reads. Um, so this was also from my TBR jar, I think. And that is The Last Time We Say Goodbye by Cynthia Hand. Uh, this deals with a young girl whose brother committed suicide and her and her mother are left sort of reeling from this and completely grief stricken. Our main character, Lex, is, um, she starts seeing her brother, starts seeing visions of him. The ending was just so, I don't know, just poignant and, and sad. And for anyone who's ever lost anybody, especially, um, via suicide is just, I don't know, like, I think that this is um, a really gorgeous and quiet contemporary about grief and I would just really highly recommend it. And the other five star read I have for this month is Serious Moonlight by Jen Bennett. Um, and I did a complete review of this um, and I will link that down below so I'm not going to talk a ton about this. This is set in Seattle and it follows two characters who had a one night stand and um, kind of went their separate ways and now they end up working the night shift at this very prestigious Seattle hotel together. Um, this is a mild mystery and I loved it. Okay, um, so on to the books that I did for my little experimental video. So if you've not got a chance to watch my reading vlog, I ask that you please pause this video, go watch the reading vlog, and come back if you don't want to be spoiled. But like I said, what I was doing is I looked at my five star reads and I reread the ones that had the lowest ratings on Goodreads. I chose the lowest five. I'm going to start with my lowest. So remember these were all five stars when I went into them. Um, this I rated a two star and that is Swimming by Joanna Hershon. This deals with um, two brothers who are like 19 and 20 and um, something happens and one of them dies one weekend and their eight-year-old sister kind of sees what happens and so you have the first part where that happens, the second part where the sister is in college now and um, is trying to figure out what happened to her brother because the other brother basically just disappeared after um, the other one was killed and so she basically lost both her brothers and um, it was not good and I don't know why I ever liked this book so much. Uh, most of these books I ended up giving three stars to um, and the next one is Scarlet Epstein Hates It Here by Anna Breslau. This is about a girl who ends up writing fan fiction but about the kids at her school and they find out and it's not great. Um, it is very funny, but also feels like it's trying way too hard. Uh, it's also fairly short. I don't think it's even 300 pages. Yeah, it's like 280 or something. And it feels like had it been developed more, it would have been a little bit better. Um, there's not another book on Slate that I can see for this author, but I would be interested to read more from her because this was her first novel. The other two three-star reads I had for this experiment I don't have on me, but the first one is Someday, Someday Maybe by Lauren Graham. If you don't know, Lauren Graham played Lorelai Gilmore on Gilmore Girls. Um, and is one of my just favorite people. Um, and so this is a contemporary, I mean, it's set in the 90s, um, adult rom-com basically about a girl named Franny who is a struggling actress in the 90s, trying to make it big in New York. And it is not bad. It's just very typical and kind of run of the mill. And had it not been written by Lauren Graham, I probably never would have given it five stars, and so on reread, I ended up giving it three. The other three star read I had was Dogs of Babel by Carolyn Parkhurst, and this is about a linguistics professor whose wife um, falls or jumps out of their apple tree in the backyard and dies, and the only living thing around was their dog, and so he tries to get their dog to speak to him or to communicate with him in order to find out what happened to his wife. Um, and it's not bad. It's a little pretentious and 
I don't know. I didn't quite connect with it like I did the first time. Um, so, I mean, if that sounds like an interesting plot to you, I would suggest checking it out. Um, I do want to give content warnings for suicide, suicidal thoughts, and animal abuse. And the last book I'm going to talk about um, ended up being my only book that remained a five-star read for me, and that is Landline by Rainbow Rowell. Um, is this a perfect book? No. Is it a five-star book for me? Yes. This is about Georgie and her husband Neil um, spending Christmas apart and Georgie, who is a workaholic TV writer, decides to call Neil back at his home in Nebraska on their landline phone at her mom's house and ends up reaching Neil in like 1990 something, like basically when they started dating in high school. So you have modern day Georgie talking with college age Neil um, and trying to kind of right the wrongs of their marriage and Georgie sort of learning about all the things that she should have maybe changed or the ways in which they can move forward from here. It is very swoony. This does of course take place at Christmas time. Um, so I might be rereading it again at Christmas. It's a very short book. It didn't take me long to get through at all. I think I read it in about three days, which for me is pretty good. Um, but yeah, this is still five stars. I love Rainbow Rowell's writing, and I know that it's not always perfect. I still really enjoyed this. Okay, guys, and that is all that I read for the month of April. Um, as you can see there, I did get two of my TBR jar picks done. The one that I did not get done was Out of the Easy by Ruta Sepetti, so that will go back on my shelf. And uh, yeah, please let me know down in the comments below if you read any of these books, if you enjoyed them, how you felt about them. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe, and I'll be back soon with more book talk. Bye!